I would like to introduce Oxylana. Oxylana. What is Oxylana? Oxyliner is a pipe relining epoxy repair tool that we use on smaller diameter pipes to repair leaks and badly corroded water pipe or a drain that you don't necessarily want to be chopping open and replacing. Sometimes you are landed in a situation where you have a leaking shower on a new build, newly tiled, the bath has been installed and the water is dripping through the ceiling in the unit below. Oxyliner is simple by design. On the range of Oxyliner tools, this is the biggest cannon. This one caters for larger pipe diameters and further distances, mainly for your waste pipe coating, to sandblast and to apply an epoxy coat to the pipe work. You have your smallest cannon in the Oxyliner retinue, which is mainly rated for your water pipe repairs. And the idea is to use pressurized air to pressurize the tube and to push the medium into the pump. At the top end, we have your loading zone for the air connection, an open cavity where you can have your sandblast and sand. Then you will top this up with Oxyliner epoxy, which will come in potable epoxy or a non-potable epoxy. The potable will be used for water pipes and the non-potable for drain pipes. It's slightly more dense and suitable for larger diameters. If you have a tube and there are a couple of items that you will need on every installation. Number one, high pressure gas. The Oxyliner cannons, whether it's the large one or the little baby one, all work on pressurized air. We always use pressurized oxygen at 200 bars and that gives you enough volume to pull off a job and I will always spec one. With your high pressure oxygen you need a pressure regulator which will have your pressure dials, your connection for the cylinder and your adjustment for your regulator. You can go up to 16 bar. This will hook up to your high pressure cylinder then you will need your high pressure air hose this one's been used quite well in the last year and i always have quick release couplings on my hoses your quick release female coupler on the accessories and your air supply you make sure that your isolating valve is closed and then on the other end of the tube we have the application point you have an isolating valve you will use this as the outlet facing the correct direction we always face the outlet down so whatever's in there is using gravity sitting against the bottom outlet of the valve the pressurized air comes from the hose at the top and forces whatever is in there out on the outlet of the tube goes your connector, usually a 20 mil braided connector, three quarter inch. And that will just give you a bit of flexibility at the bottom to connect to other water pipes or drainage pipes. To connect to a drain, you would have your little waste pipe plug, which is basically a drain plug, but smaller. We all know what that is. For a shower or bath, you can connect to any standard waste fitting without removing it. Just plug your waste pipe plug into the waste fitting, tighten up the nut, and you are connected. Then you are ready to add in any of your required contents to the top of the tube. In order to clean the pipe out, we use sandblasting sand. So we put about a cup of that into the top of the tube. Close her up. I've always got some thread tape on the thread there just to keep it nice and sealed. Make sure your outlets are closed and your pressure gauge valve is open so you can see what pressure you're at. Once you're airtight, open the valve on the air inlet and you are pressurized. All you need to do is release. Then we follow exactly the same process in coating. We use part A, part B of Oxyliner epoxy, potable epoxy for water pipes, non-potable for waste pipes. And once this is mixed together, you pour the epoxy into the tube, close it up airtight again, and 
pressurized. For smaller pipes you can get away with 8 bar but waste pipes I would always go to 10. Your initial blast is what counts. One blast and close. Generally when you're starting to coat you want to blast the epoxy in so it travels as far and as widely as possible to coat the walls of the pipe. When you're coating don't open it slowly because then you slowly fart the air into the pipe. You want to quickly release and shoot the epoxy into the line. You sometimes need to repeat the process. If it's a larger pipe, you can even do it in two sessions and split the epoxy. Those are the basic components for your setup. I always keep air flowing through the pipe until the epoxy is dry enough that it has stopped running. Especially important on bath wastes where you have an overflow going to the trap, you want to make sure that the air is flowing for the entire duration of your cleanup and while you're packing the van so you know when you leave site that the overflow and all the drainage pathways are open and that no epoxy is sagging in the line. You don't want that line to block up. Keep air running through the pipe until you know that the epoxy has become sag resistant and is not running anymore. My number one rule is keep the site clean. Two things that I keep religiously is a five liter bottle of acetone nail polish remover and a bucket of cloths. These are priceless. When you have a spillage or a loose hose or you finish coating and a little bit of epoxy drops on the floor, acetone and lapis are your best friend to keep the site clean. Just be careful what you acetone acetone wisely. You want some drop sheeting and nice painter's tape to allow you to protect the site. You can just put drop sheeting everywhere that you're working and if you drop any epoxy everything is okay. And your sandblasting sand. Make sure you've got enough epoxy that will last you for the job and a little bit extra. Then you want your little stash of spoons and chopsticks that will help you when it comes to mixing your epoxy. If you are using small amounts, otherwise you can use a paint mixer. You might want to use a heat gun to help things dry faster or an air blower to push stuff through the line and keep the pipes open. And lots of plastic bags. Keep all of the stuff in a kit. You have your regulator, you've got your flat flexible hoses, plug, fresh tube of oxygen, cleaning material and site preparation which includes tape, drop sheets and plastic bags. I always bring dustbin bags in a bin and then the dustbin can be your crate where you hold everything in, have your dustbin bags, throw all your contaminated waste into that bin and then take it away. I would advise keeping a stash of fittings, quick release fittings, valves, elbows, nipples, reducers, just in case your connection, say it is a shower and you've got a weird 90 degree connection, at least you've got some extra bits and pieces to help you navigate around corners and bends. And then you should be in and out of the customer's house within two hours. And well, that's Oxyliner folks. In and out, it's, it's very simple.